بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أيها الحبة في الله. Continuing on in our sitting, our jalasat, with the talking about the conditions for the shahada. The third condition, habit of Allah, of the shahada is acceptance or kabul. And as we mentioned, if a person has the knowledge, as we mentioned was the first one, and certainty, the second one, in the shahada, then that must be followed that they accept that. Shahada. They must accept that knowledge, uh, and that acceptance is with the heart and the tongue. And that acceptance is that uh, is with regards to everything that the shahada implies uh, as a as a mu'min. And whoever refuses to accept the shahada and its implications, even if he knows that it is true and certain about its truth, is a disbeliever. And what we see from what we see from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that his uncle. Abdul Muttalib uh, didn't accept the shahada where he knew it was true and he defended the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doing all these good deeds defending the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Prophet of Islam alayhi salatu wasalam and he was the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but that wasn't sufficient because he didn't accept it he knew it was the truth but he, uh, he said I'm gonna die upon what my fathers were upon I can't leave what they were upon he was being urged by uh, the, the pagans around him and they they didn't want him to leave he said I'm on the Dean I'm in the Dean of, of those who came before me so the condition requires from us, the shahada requires from us, that we accept. We accept uh, the haq. We accept the truth. Or that makes a person uh, continue to be a disbeliever. And this refusal of the truth sometimes can be due to pride or envy or other reasons. So sometimes it's due to pride, you know, arrogance, sometimes out of envy. And that is a very dangerous thing. And the shaitan comes to you. It's going to happen to you that sometimes when the hawk comes to you, someone will correct you. And you, you, the shaitan will come to you. You know more than, about Islam than this person. Or how dare this person correct you in this. Or something as simple, about, as, simple as that. But you have to accept that. You have to accept the hawk when it comes. And likewise, more importantly that than that, or just as important, because this this is related to Tawheed, is accepting the Shahada, accepting the implications about it, that the implications that you worship none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't worship Jesus. You have to let go of all that false worship. The scholars, they mention Allah, about this condition, uh, and they detail this, that... This acceptance, uh, true acceptance, this means that the believer, that whatever comes in the Quran and the Sunnah, that's in the authentic Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the believer accepts it, no matter what. Even if it goes against his or her de desires or inclination, they accept it because it comes from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. So they accept that. And Ahabat uh, Tifilah, I want to mention something. Just yesterday, I had a long, lengthy discussion with a brother in Islam, but it shocked me because it became clear his Aqidah. That in fact, he hadn't really accepted really kitab wala sunnah because why his questions were the same questions and the same uh, he had the same aspects of the belief as the Shia the Rafidah who make takfir of the Sahaba he was cursing one of the or he wasn't cursing the Sahabi radiallahu ta'ala but he was speaking about Muawiyah and I said it's from the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah to accept and to love the Sahaba because they were the ones who preserved the deen. They were there when the revelation was revealed. They were the ones who preserved the revelation. They were the ones who compiled the Quran. It was a Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When you cause doubt in any one of the Sahaba, you cause doubt into Islam. And this is what I told him. Because you're not by not accepting that Sahabi and saying, well, in his time such and such happened, or he was responsive, responsible for such and such, or what between the, what happened between the Sahaba, Sahaba, this was this and this was that. I say, no, it's from the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah and the Minhaj of Ahl Sunnah to accept 
and to love the Sahaba and the Prophet Sallallahu said La Sahabi do not curse my companions the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned the Sahaba and loved the Sahaba and chose them as his companions and Allah chose them as companions and Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says in Kitab Al-Karim wa sabaquna al-awwalun min al min al min al-muhajirin wal ansar that Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala mentioned those first first and foremost from amongst the muhajirin and the ansar who were they they were those who made hijrah from Mecca to Medina the Sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in and they were those in from Ahl Medina who accepted the muhajirin radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in accepting kitab wa sunnah accepting the conditions of the shahada that's what islam is so it's not for us to debate and not for us to think about this and think about that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al kareem afa tu'minun bi ba'd al kitab wa takfurun bi ba'd fa ma jazaa'u min man yaf'al dhalika minkum illa khizyun fil hayat al dunya wal yawm al qiyam wal yawm al qiyam yurdun ila ashad al adhab allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al kareem do you believe in part of the book and reject part of it? And what is the reward of those who do so save ignominy in the life of the uh, uh, in the life of this world and on the day of resurrection they will be consigned to the most grievous punishment or doom. In Surah Al-Baqarah, I habit fi Allah. Accepting the testimony of faith is absolutely imperative for the believer. And being away from those things which uh, invalidate a person's invalidate uh, a person's faith is, is imperative. So this requires ilm, and as we said, ilm wa yaqeen wa qabool, knowledge, certainty, and qabool that you accept that. You have to really accept that in your heart. And may Allah bless it with tawfiq, with ikhlas, with thabat, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.